And let me read it out. And again, O oh Sariputra, Sariputra is a disciple of the Buddha. There are in that Buddha country swans, curlews, and peacocks, and three times every night and three times every day, they come together and perform a concert, each uttering his own note. And from them, thus uttering proceeds a sound proclaiming the five virtues, the five powers, and the seven steps leading towards the highest knowledge. That's where we stopped at last time. I need a little bit of explanation. We are now studying the Amitabha Sutra. Um, we're studying about the land where after death, uh, the sentient beings can go to. This is the land of happiness. This concept of the land of happiness, the place where you go to, you don't have to roll into the next Zamzara uh, reincarnation, it's quite analogous to other religions' heaven concept. This is very close. Because in, in other religions, they talk about heaven, talk about a God in heaven, talking about worshiping God, and you'll be received in that heaven. Now, this method of practice is very similar. It is the Buddhist teaching. You see, the Buddhist teaching contains many methods. This is one of the many methods. If you're not successful in this lifetime, in your meditation, to achieve enlightenment, uh, to qualify yourself, to be free from the incarnations, life and death. The Buddha said, Sakamuni Buddha said, this is the place that you should go to. Because when you go to that place, it's a place of non-retrogression. In other words, you go to that place, the land of happiness, Amitabha's pure land, and in there, it's like a heaven, it's all ha happy all the time, no more suffering, and in there you study and practice to be the Buddha. You're not the Buddha yet, but you will be under the auspice of Buddha, Amitabha, and many, many other Buddhist sattvas and arahats. They will be your teachers, the professors teaching you how to become the Buddha. You would not retrogress into the six paths of reincarnation. So this is a heaven concept that is quite similar to other religions. So you have to remember that. Well, talking about heaven, uh, I, have very, I have some experiences that I would like to share with you. Uh, many, many years ago when I was in Hong Kong, um, I was 18 then, or 19 or 18. Um, I volunteered to be a teacher in the Sunday school for, for, for grade two students, primary two students. So I volunteered at that school and I was teaching um, Sunday school. So on that particular Sunday, I was teaching to a group of grade two students. How many of them? 30 or 40. I was talking about heaven. I said, here's a, ho a, whole, bun a whole bunch of kids, two, grade two kids in there, uh, very lively and, and uh, some of them very hilarious on Sunday mornings. And I was talking about heaven. I said, if you want to go to heaven, you have to qualify yourself. You have to justify yourself in your deeds, in your behavior, so that in the future you can go to heaven. And I, and I talked to them about these 10 deeds. Abstain from killing, so not to kill. Abstain from skill, killing. Abstain from stealing. Abstain from sexual misconduct. Abstain from lying. Abstain from drinking. Abstain from ignorance and greed and all these qualifications that you need to go to heaven. So then I said, heaven is, is, is the right place to go because there's only happiness in there. You have all your dreams come true. All your dream toys, just not just one, maybe 10, if, whatever you want. When you're in heaven, it will become true for you. So you better be a good student. You better do all good deeds. And these kids were listening and they were so involved in it. Yeah, that's good. So we can have all the dream toys and everything we have in heaven we can get. So uh, after talking for a while, I wanted to have a review. But talking to a group of grade two, you cannot be too high level. You can't say, let's do a conclusion. Let's do a summary. You don't talk like that. You just say, um, we want to go to heaven, so you have to behave good. You have to be a nice kids. And uh, 
So I asked them a question. Who wants to go to heaven? <laughs> I said, who wants to go to heaven? So everybody raised his hand. We, we all want to go to heaven. All the kids raised his hand. I want to go to heaven. Uh, but I said, if you want to go to heaven, you have to do all these good deeds. Yeah, we want to, all, everybody wants to go to heaven. Who wants to go to heaven? We want to go to heaven. Everybody raised his hand. And I saw there, there's one kid, he was shaking his head. I said, Sonny, how come you, you don't want to go to heaven? And he said, I can't. I can't go to heaven. I said, why? Why can't you go to heaven? My mom told me to go straight home after school. <laughs> oh, I said, is that so? So he was a nice kid anyway. Now that's this is something something to talk about uh, on Sunday morning, Saturday morning. Anyway, so let's continue with this. When the man there hear that sound, remembrance of Buddha, remembrance of the law, remembrance of the church rises in their mind. What does that mean? When sentient beings there, when they hear that musical sound, that kind of melody, remembrance of the Buddha. What does that mean? They always remember the Buddha and the Buddha's deeds, how to practice, how to become a Buddha. Remembrance of the law. What is the law? The Dharma, the Buddha's teaching. Remembrance of the church. The church, that means the Sangha. So when Max Muller, Sanskrit expert, translated this, he used the word church, law, and Buddha. So all these things rises in the mind. Now do you think, O oh Sariputra, that there are beings who have entered into the nature of animals, birds, and sea? Now do you think, O oh Sariputra, that there are beings who have entered into the nature of animals? That means do not think that in that land there is still reincarnation because you saw animals. The animals, birds in that land. This is not to be thought of. Don't think of that as karma, that in that land there is still karma, there is, there are, there are still uh, karmic energy that would lead people uh, into reincarnating into animals. Don't think about that. The very name of hell is unknown in that Buddha country. That means there's no hell in that Buddha country. There's no animal realm, there's no hell. And likewise, that of descent into animal bodies and of the realm of Yama. So there's no reincarnated animals. They're just created by Amitabha out of his miraculous power. And there's also no realm of Yama, the four appires. The realm of Yama, the realm of Yama is just like, Yama is another word uh, for Mara, devils. And the four appires, that means the four paths, the four wishes paths of reincarnations. The Azuras, which is the demon's ram, the animals, the animal's ram, the, the petters, the hell ram, and the evils, the ghost rams. So there are no ghost ram, no, no evil ram, no hell ram, no demon's ram. So in that country, there's no such thing. Let's go on to the next. Now, these types of birds have been made on purpose by the Taragata Amitayas, and they utter the sound of law. These birds become bird not out of karmic reincarnations. They are made on purpose by Taragata Amitayas. Taragata is another name for the Buddha. Remember the Buddha has ten names, ten epithets. One of the ten names is Taragata. So these birds were made on purpose by Taragata Amitayas, and they utter the, the sound of of, of law, they utter the sound of the Dharma, of the Buddha's teaching. What is the meaning of Amitayas? Amitta, Amitta is infinite. Yours is life, length of life. That means infinite or immeasurable lifespan. The Buddha of immeasurable lifespan, which is the same as Amitabha. You see, Amitabha has another name. Amitabha has two names, basically. One is Amitabha. Amitta means immeasurable and infinite. Ba means light. Abba means light. So Amitabha is 
the Buddha of infinite light. It's also called the, the Buddha of infinite lifespan, long longevity, infinite life. That's also the name, another name for Amitabha. Amitayas, another name for Amitabha. So you have to remember that when you read Amitayas, it's the same as Amitabha. And also in that land, all the sentient beings in that land enjoy immeasurable lifespan. With such a race of excellences and see, I've been searching the meaning of and see, and I found the meaning. Uh, it's an old version of exactra, and so on. That means with such a race of excellences, etc. All these other descriptions. And again, O Saraputra, when those rows of palm trees and strings of bells in that Buddha country are moved by the wind, a sweet and enrapturing sound proceeds from them. There are rows of palm trees in there. You see, this sutra contain detailed description of the land of happiness of this land of happiness, of this heaven. Uh, there are other sutras that also explain, but this is a smaller sutra that explains in detail what a description of the land of the Buddha, of that Amitabha's pure land. So there are palm trees in there, and strings of bells in that Buddha country are moved by the wind. There are bells in, in, the, in the palm tree, and when the bells are moved by the wind, as sweet and enrapturing, and enrapturing is pleasurable sound, sound that is so pleasant to hear. But this kind of pleasurable sound is not the same as our worldly pleasurable sound that we, we, that we hear, that we listen to. The kind of music we listen to is pleasurable, but that kind of pleasurable sound could be inducing your pleasures, which means that it could be seductive. The kind of music you hear and hear could be seductive, could be mesmerizing, is seductive to your pleasures, to your internal pleasures. But in there, this kind of pleasurable sound is not like that. This is a kind of pleasurable sound that gives you the real happiness, that is not tainted with any other uh, defiled pleasures. So this is, so this word is used, and rapturing sound proceeds from them. When we listen to music, we should watch out, because some music may give you the peace of mind, some music may give you, may instigate your pleasures to do other things. So you're going to watch out what kind of music you're listening to. Next. Yes, O Sariputra, as from a heavenly musical instrument consisting of a hundred thousand kotis of sound. The meaning, what's the meaning of a kotis? Kotis is a very high number in the Sanskrit language. Thousand kotis, that means millions, thousands of millions of numbers of sounds. When played by the Aryas, Aryas are the saints, the sages. A sweet and enrapturing sound proceeds. A sweet and enrapturing sound proceeds from those rows of palm trees and strength of bells moved by the wind. And when the men hear that sound, reflection on Buddha arises in them, reflection on the law, reflection on the church, with such a race of excellences and etc. That means when people there listen to this music, they always remember the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. In other words, they always remember the Buddha's teaching. So that's the reason why when you're in that land, everything you, you get into contact, all your senses that you've got into contact are about enlightenment, are about the Buddha's teaching. So in other words, you have been trained in your mind to us leading you towards the path of enlightenment, towards the path of nirvana. In this world, it's not. You could be enticed and mesmerized by many, many other things that may defile your, play, your, your, your senses, uh, that may pollute your senses. But in there, every note, everything you see, is purifying your senses. Next. Now, what do you think, O Saraputra? For what reason is that Tathagata called Amitayas? The length of life, O Saraputra, of that Tathagata and of those men that is immeasurable. Therefore, is that Tathagata called Amitayas? And ten kalpas have passed, 
O Sariputra, since that Tathagata awoke to perfect knowledge. That means, historically, since Amitabha had become the Buddha, ten Kalpas have passed. What's the meaning of Kalpas? Kalpas is earned an infinite, very infinite long period of time. So ten Kalpas is description of many, many times. Long time ago, uh, Amitabha Buddha have become the Buddha. Uh, have that kind of God that to perfect knowledge. Many, 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 many years ago, long time ago, this Buddha has become the Buddha. The ascension being has become the Buddha, Amitabha or Amitaya, and he, he vows to save all sentient beings who at the verge of death was able to concentrate and chant ten times his name. He will receive his soul into that land of, land of bliss, into that uh, land of happiness. So if we think that we are senior enough, um, we don't think that just by our self-efforts doing meditation will achieve nirvana, enlightenment, will achieve perfect knowledge. So this is the way to go. Everybody has to die anyway. So at the verge of death, you're not clinging to the world. You want to leave this world. Some people don't want to go when they die, you know that. They always want to attach to this world. They have many unfinished businesses. They, they always got in their mind, their estates, their, 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 their possessions, their relatives, their friends. They don't want to leave this world. They thought that, oh, I'm, oh this is terrible. I have to leave this world. Uh, they, forgot about, they forgot about the suffering. They don't want to leave. But they don't want to leave, but their body wants them to leave. They, so they're fighting. The body and this wish is fighting against each other, they can't go. They will be always panting and depending on the oxygen, maybe lying in there like a vegetation for maybe for, for months. So you have to first let go of the body. Just in case in the future that you are on the verge of dying, everybody has to die. No exception. Make sure that you let go of your body. Many people in the hospitals, if you visit hospitals, hospital care, they don't want to leave. A few people, they want to leave because they suffer enough. They say, I don't want this body, I have suffered enough. But they have no intention of where to go to. They just, I don't want to be in this place. I want to shut off this body. No more body for me. They have that intention, but they don't know where to go. But if you study the Buddhist teaching, concentrate in the training, you know where to go. You want to let go of your body, you don't want, you want to leave this world, that's the place you want to go. That university, the university of the land of bliss, the university where Amitabha is the professor, Avalokitesvara, Mahamasprapta, and many other bodhisattvas and arahats, they are the assistant professors, plus many other tutors in there waiting for you to study and become the Buddha, non-retrogression, no more suffering, no more retrogression back to life and death. That's the place that we want to go to. But these sutras give us instructions and training as to how to get us prepared and qualified to go there. You can't just say, okay, as long as when I'm at the verge of death, I let go of my body and I want to go there, and, I'll be, and that will be easy. It's not that easy. Because when we die, we're so confused at the age, at, at the words, at, at the time when we are dying. We cannot concentrate. Plus, you may have bodily pain. You may have many bodily pains. You may not be able to breathe. You may be so confused in your mentality that you're not concentrated, that you're not in a meditative state. In there, this is one of the sutras that teaches us how to qualify ourselves to go there. There are other contemplation sutras about this land of bliss. They teach you how to meditate on the land of bliss, Amitabha's land, so that at the, at the verge of death, you won't be confused. You'll be so clear, you'll be so calm, you'll be so peaceful that very quickly, you're away from your suffering and you are reborn in there on the lotus. You'll be receiving the lotus in there, 
and then you all would, would sprout in that land and you would stand up and you become a sentient being in there. Sakamini Buddha was so compassionate, he was so considerate. He was thinking, as time goes on, there are many, many people whose karmic energy was so heavy that they may not be able to be successful in the meditation to be enlightened. I should give them a method that they should go to a certain school where they continue to learn. But that school must help them to get out from life and death first. And they must get admitted into that school. So some of these sutras talk about the requisites, the prerequisites for you to be qualified to go there. Are you interested in knowing this? This is just the beginning. Now with it, it contains a description of the land of bliss. There are other sutras, which is in here also, one of it is in here, the sutra of visualizing the Buddha of immeasurable of life. How do you visualize? If you learn the visualization, visualize is how do you visualize that image so that at the words of death, your visualization comes true and you, your mind is it's all concentrated. Your mind would not be confused. Your mind would not be in a topsy-turvy state where you don't know what to do. You'll be so concentrated that your mind and the Amitabha's mind is all one. In other words, you have to adjust your, your computer to that website. That website of the land of bliss. You got to get the website address right. You have to tune to it all the time. Because at, eight, at, at the words of death, you won't be able to, because you haven't been trained to. So you have to get used to it, always tune to it. So every, every day you chant now Mamitava, so you, you tune the name to your website, and you also tune your mind to the website. You tune to both minds. Remember the mind is two, in two hemispheres, the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere. The left hemisphere, as you know, is the place where here, where you learn all the languages, the words, the mathematics, your, your daily chores, everything is, is operated from the left mind. That's how you learn. But your left mind also continues the egoistic feeling. Your jealousy, your hatred, your disappointment, your depression, your greediness, everything is also in there. Your right mind is more or less at a peaceful stage where it, it triggers wisdom in you to balance you out. But when our senses are interacting with the outside world, it's usually the left mind, which is very active, dominates the right mind. The left mind, the emotional mind, when you come to a conflict, say when somebody infuriate, uh, infuriates you, you get mad. When you get mad, your left mind is functioning. Then your right mind will say, don't get mad. It, try to adjust it out. But usually the left mind wins, dominates. So when you are always training your right mind, when you are meditating, when you are chanting Namo Amitabha, when you are reading sutras, you are actually training your right mind, which is your mind, away from the egoistic behavior. You tap into your right mind. Your right mind can store up all your seeds of energy. You tap into it. You germinate your seeds of Amitabha into that storage right mind. You store and store and store all the good seeds in there. It, it, you water it every time when you chant Amitabha. You water it. You let sunlight to go through it. And then at, at the verge of death, it's easily triggered and it easily sprouts. So make sure you balance it out. Train your right mind. Let your right mind equally dominate each other, the left and the right. So let's carry on. And what do you think, O Saraputra? For what reason is that Taragatteko Amitabha? The splendor. The splendor is the light. Amitta, Amitta is immeasurable. Abba is light, immeasurable light. The splendor, the light, O Saraputra, of that Taragatta is unimpeded. 
over all Buddha countries. Therefore, is that Dhanagata called Amitabha. The splendor in there, the light in there is never stopped by anything in that Buddha land. And there is, O oh, Saraputra, an innumerable assembly of disciples with that Dharagatta, purified and venerable persons, whose number it is not easy to count, with such arrays of excellences and see. That means in there, there is innumerable assembly of disciples, of Bodhisattvas, of Arahads, of saints, of Sodapana, of Sakradagaman, of Anagaman. There are a lot of saints in there. In that land of happiness, Amitabha's pure land, there are already millions of people there. Maybe some of your friends were already in there. Maybe you'll be joining them in the future. There are many, many people there who were reborn in that land where they don't need to grasp into reincarnation anymore. No more suffering anymore. And next time, what I would do is I will introduce one or two other great philosophers um, not too long after Sakamuni Buddha's um, uh, period, how they describe the Pure Land. What do they think about this training? What do they think about how to go to the Pure Land? Uh, these are great philosophers, and particularly Vasubandhu and Asanga. They are the pioneers of Vichnanavadin. The, the, the school of consciousness only. So next time we we'll get more into it. This is a very simple sutra. We already gone through half of it, describing the pure land. And uh, every day, train yourself in chanting the name Amitabha. That is the website address that you tap into. But that takes time to get adjust to it.